Ja, ja, ja. So, can you hear me? Yes. So, hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, I'm happy you're all here. Um, I think it's great we are here in a newly opened location. We are one of the first ones that have their event here. So uh, thank you very much, Andy, where he is. Thanks that we can be here. It's really a beautiful location. Looking forward for the next events happening here. So my name is Matthias, Matthias Kies. I'm a board member of the IAA and as well uh, part of the Swiss chapter and CEO of TBWA. I welcome all of you here. So we have uh, about 60 people joining tonight. And we have as well some people joining on the cameras in a live stream. So hello to everybody. I don't know who it is, but it might be a bunch of people as well streaming. So sustainable marketing is a critical part of operating a sustainable business. But what does the term sustainable marketing really mean? And how can brands meet the needs of everyone without compromising the security for future generations? On our stage here today in Zurich, we are welcoming four panelists that will share with you their perspectives on sustainable marketing. I would like to quickly introduce the panelists and our moderator, charming Natasha. So first we start with Nicola. Nicola Borda, who works and lives in Paris and traveled today via train, of course, to Zurich, to be on our stage today, is the Vice President International of TBWA worldwide and in charge of environmental sustainability. He's also the co-chair of the Sustainability Task Force at the European Association of Communication Agencies. We have invited Nicola to start the session tonight with a short keynote speech about sustainable marketing before we will welcome him to the panel. But in addition, we have other people. Welcome Laura, Laura Loos. She is head of marketing Switzerland at the Coca-Cola company. She's a skilled marketeer with more than 10 years of experience in building and maintaining leading international brands. Roman Reichelt as well, well known in the market. Welcome Roman. He's the global CM of of, of Credit Suisse and a member of the management committee of Credit Suisse Switzerland. He's responsible for the Credit Suisse brand as well as for all marketing initiatives of Credit Suisse. Last but not least, welcome Tobias. Tobias Zehnder, he's co-founder at Web Republic and representative at Green Media Switzerland, where he might talk a little bit about later on. The initiative advocates for more climate neutral advertising. The panel will be moderated by our IAA board member, Natasha Feldpoke. She will discuss how brands can benefit from engaging in sustainable practices and how they can communicate their commitment to their customers. I really look forward to this power packed panel. But first, let's welcome Nicola Borda on our stage. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, Matthias. And uh, I'm very proud and happy to be here with you tonight. Uh, I'm French, I can hear easily. Uh, and uh, I, I've taken the responsibility of uh, environmental sustainability for TB Worldwide uh, a couple of months ago, uh, even if I'm very passionate by the topic for much more time. And uh, what I'm going to share with you, I 
start really some uh, facts and figures uh, in order to help uh, the, the debate. So questions will come after. Is my micro is working? I guess. Uh, so I, I will start by uh, because I need. Okay, perhaps could I have the other microphone? I needed an headline for my speech. And uh, you know that one of the famous campaigns we have produced at uh, TV Worldwide is uh, for Apple, the Think Different campaign. And uh, I did that my headline should be Think Collective. Uh, and that's why I'm so happy to be here tonight uh, within the Inter International Advertising Association uh, Collective, uh, because there's no way to fight against uh, climate change if we are doing it all together. And when I'm saying all together, it's of course all over the world, all the countries, all the people. But if we are talking about communication, we are talking about agencies, we are talking about advertisers, uh, and, and, and of course, uh, all kinds uh, of people working uh, in this category. So as I was mentioning, uh, I wanted to, to start by a few facts just um, to, to keep in mind what is what really matters with a, a question about this book. Uh, I guess some of you know this book. Uh, could you raise your hand if you have read this book? Yes, one, two, only two, three. Uh, I this book to you. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to look at the carbon consumption. You would look at, uh, at the money in a, in a way. So uh, how bad are bananas? Good news, bananas are not that bad. Uh, it, it's only 40 grams, but to have the culture uh, of uh, the carbon uh, footprint of everything. And I think we should have this culture. I think our people should have this culture because uh, we should act at the right place. Uh, and the question is, how bad is advertising? So just a few figures. 105 tons of equivalent carbon is one year of Matthias and his team uh, carbon footprint uh, measured by uh, Climate Park, so it's an uh, independent consulting uh, company. Uh, so I would say it's not it's not that much because uh, on average it has been calculated that uh, in, in communication agencies the average is three tons by people, so it should be 240. And, uh, it's only 105, so congratulations, I mean, you can do better, but it's already very good. Can you imagine that just one TV ad produced last year by an agency I know very well in Paris uh, was producing 110 tons, just one TV ad. It's a major production, a big one for a big company. Uh, so one TV ad uh, in terms of just production equivalent to uh, an agency, a full agency. And another figure coming from another survey uh, done by a digital uh, company called 55, and they tried to uh, measure a kind of average small digital campaign. It's not a big one in terms of media consumption, because uh, we'll see later on uh, digital is highly uh, um, responsible for, for, for carbon uh, emission. It's 70 tons. So just to say that what you, Matthias can do on his own for the agency, which is to try to downside a little bit every year by 5%, 10% if he can do it, is very important and he should do it. But what he should really do <laughs> is to work with advertisers who are in the room on how to downsize uh, the production, how to downsize the media, and that there's no way to do it on, your, on our own. We should do it together. And this is a little part of the issue. So I don't know if you are familiar, if you are familiar with the distinction between advertising emission and advertised emissions. Advertising emission is really the consequence of the production and the media airing uh, of uh, advertising. So it's a, it's really the, the carbon footprint of all the people working, the production and the media. Advertised emissions, uh, as um, defined uh, by, by the UK team who was in charge of, the, of this survey, which is coming from UK, is the uplift in carbon emission that results from the increase in sales generated by advertising. 
So of course, it's very complicated to calculate. A lot of assumptions are made. Of, yes, for, for sure. So we are not 100% sure. But in UK, the advertising emissions are representing 1 million tons when the advertised emissions are representing 208 million tons. And this figure uh, will be uh, presented next week. So I've got it because it has been presented, uh, uh, I would say, ahead of the formal presentation at the COP27 last week. So now it's public. Uh, but if you want to know more, you just need to, uh, to attend on the 23rd of November the whole explanation. But the other not good news, uh, I'm sorry to, to be the one with the bad news at the start, but we'll see how to get out of it, is that when you look at the, the evolution of the measurement, uh, the 208 of 22 is putting us on the, not on the right path, to be honest. So the question is really how to move down from 208 to an acceptable 93, which is based on their estimation. So there's no other way to tackle that kind of issues and to do it collectively by putting all our thinking or our creativity together uh, to make it better. And of course, by avoiding the pitfall of greenwashing, which is another collective responsibility. Because uh, of course, if you are proud of what you have done on one side, you, you will have to create the desire for people to recognize it is good and, and potentially to buy the product. But be careful in the way you tell it, because uh, the light is there, but uh, there, there could be some darkness somewhere. And you, you cannot claim you are perfectly clean if you are not. The good news is that uh, in our industry, there was a big uh, event, in my point of view, in last January, uh, when all the holding companies and all the uh, advertising associations has, have decided to, to fully support the UK initiative called AdNet Zero. I guess you heard about it, if not, um, and a lot of you are already part of it, uh, to become global. And this is very important because if we want to go fast, we need to work fast together based on the same assumptions, based on the same, uh, sharing the same figures, not having calculations that doesn't fit with other calculations and so on. And also trying to push all together in the same direction. So this photo was taken in Cannes on the 21st of June this year uh, with all the holding companies, PP, Omnicom, Interpublic, Publicis, Pass, Densu, together to support the UK initiative becoming global. And the, the English people have done an amazing job. So I don't know who, 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 ha, who has been on this website already in that room. One, two, three, four. Oh, not that many. So honestly, I would uh, 10 of you just to give you the answer. Uh, so which is already good, but not enough. Uh, what they did is really to try to split the task um, by saying, OK, action one is about getting your house in order, as Matthias did uh, uh, in Zurich, um, uh, about uh, calculation and, and, and lowering the curve. Second, about production. Third, about media. Fourth, about events, because of course, uh, events are, are also producing a lot of uh, carbon emission. Uh, and, and fifth, this main issue about the culture, about uh, the, the influence uh, advertising has uh, when, when it's working well to sell the products and services. And I'm not going to be into detail to show you what you can expect if you go there <laughs> to addedzero.com. There is uh, how to um, go further if you are a creative agency, a media agency, a media platform, production company, and if you are an advertiser. And on each action, you have very uh, easy uh, action plans that you can uh, activate. And we know we should do it. We should do it for the planet. We should do it. There's no way not to do it. But we should do it also really for our people. If not, we will not have that many people who want to work in our industry uh, anymore if we are not accelerating. This survey is, again, coming from UK because they are ahead uh, of, uh, in comparison to other countries. But I would bet that we will have exactly the same figures all over Europe, continental Europe, and even in, in quite a lot of countries. 96% of the, so it, it was done, is, if, if I am right, uh, um, uh, the interview were, were made with people under uh, 35, or something like that. 96% are worried about the impact uh, we as a species are having on the planet. Well, fair enough. 84% say the current climate situation 
often or sometimes impacts their sense of well-being. 91% agree knowing their organization was taking climate action would improve their job satisfaction, but 45% have questioned working in the industry due to its environmental impact. 45%. It's huge. So we need to have an answer. And specifically, we in, in that room, all the people who believe of the power of advertising to change and to help transformation, we should have a clear message towards those people about, yes, we need to change and communication is a way to change. And that's why you have to join uh, the communication industry. I know this is a, a huge element of information, but I think it's an important one. Uh, because we are, we are not at the same level of knowledge, we are not that familiar with, uh, with everything. So I try to put everything in one very simple uh, slide. Scope one, scope two, scope three. I think you are very familiar with that. Scope one is really the direct uh, uh, energy you are consuming for your company. Scope two is the kind of energy you get. Uh, is it a green energy or not a green energy so you don't have the same impact? And scope three is all the rest. I would say is all the mess. <laughs> Or it's all the rest you can choose. So it's all the rest. So there is a part of scope three which is quite measurable. By the way, if you look at the reports uh, in the last, let's say, 10 years, uh, even if all holding companies were listed on the stock markets uh, were reporting, on scope three, they were mainly reporting business uh, travels, meaning plane travels, uh, which which makes sense because plane travel uh, uh, is, is usually guilty in terms of, of, of uh, carbon emission. But now we know how to measure much more. So I think this part of the job is, is quite fairly done now, but it's only 15% or 15 is an average, and it could be 10 or 20, but 15%. What is really interesting is, is here. 35% is coming from production on average, and now we have the capability to measure much more than in the past. And this is why this should really be the next goal uh, to, to activate. This one is still very complicated. So we know that probably more than 50% of measurable uh, carbon footprint is coming from media. But we don't know really how to reconcile that. Of course, there are tools. Group M has a great tool. Publicis has developed a tool called Alice. So yes, there are tools. The problem is those tools are not really connected <laughs> with the reality uh, of, of, of the media. So they are interesting, they are great, uh, I would say, progresses, but they are limited. So uh, the good news is that there is a task force um, with all the holding companies working together um, within the umbrella of Net Zero to try to get a new tool uh, that everyone could use uh, in that room uh, uh, next year. And then you, are, you have all the part that is so much important, which is not that easy uh, to, to measure. And of course, it's a common responsibility. This is much more the agency responsibility. Of course, this is much more uh, the advertiser's responsibility because we are talking about their products, their services, uh, and, and the way they decide to shoot uh, at a high cost for, um, uh, for carbon or not. So, uh, what are the solutions in place because some solutions are coming? First of all, as far as, far as cleaning your house is cleaning how houses or common houses is concerned, uh, there is a kind of consensus nowadays that SBTI should be the goal. And, and most of major companies uh, are, are now engaging with SBTI, uh, and, and, and clearly SBTI is, is important. I'm going to talk about AdGreen, which is this tool. Yeah, I will explain in one slide. So I'll just give you the full flavor of the menu, which is SBTI for agencies or for your companies, because SBTI is, uh, is for any kind of company, uh, small or large. Uh, a tool for production at green, I will, I will explain. Media, the, coming, the next media calculator coming. I will have a word on change the brief that perhaps you are familiar with or not that much. Uh, so I will comment on that about how to help um, to move forward and to advise sustainably. And uh, I will come back to what exists in terms of uh, free access of learning programs you can implement tomorrow. So to answer your question, Matthias, uh, what is SBTI? Uh, the SBTI is a partnership uh, with the United Nations Global Compact and CDP and the World Resource Institute and WWF, the four logos you can see, uh, that allows companies to declare targets and plans that would be in line with uh, the Paris uh, Agreement. 
So targets are considered as scientific based because uh, SBT means scientific uh, science based targets. Sorry, targets are considered science based if they are in line with what the latest climate science deems necessary to meet the goals of Paris Agreement. This is uh, as simple as that. So uh, to to become uh, SBTI recognized, you have to, to do the job, to set your targets, to have a plan that SBTI uh, is evaluating uh, uh, in terms of credibility, and then, um, and then you get it. And now it's becoming the common language, I would say, uh, even if you can still uh, report to CDP, to ECOVADIS, or to whatever uh, other reporting that are absolutely useful, but SBTI is becoming the goal because it is the only one that pushes you to be in line with the Paris uh, agreement uh, target. Second uh, element for me that is a game changer is uh, this uh, calculator for TV production. So for the moment, it's, uh, it's only for, for, for TV uh, that has been developed during years uh, in UK, tested successfully uh, with, uh, by UK agencies, including agencies I know, I know very well. Uh, this tool now is really available in the market. Uh, it's a very low cost paid by the advertiser. It's a 0.25% uh, of, of the production uh, cost. Uh, and it's capped at 2,500 if your production cost is over 1 million. Uh, so $2,500 or Swiss francs if your uh, production cost is over 1 million sounds like an acceptable uh, price. Uh, to get the tool. So let's say it's, uh, it's uh, uh, almost for free. And um, the good news is that it, the tool has been very well uh, uh, set up uh, to, to let everyone access and feed the information, feed the data. So it can be done partly by yourself, partly by uh, the production company, partly by the sound design company. So, so the, the tool is working uh, very well. And so my bet, I think that this tool is, will become the norm uh, for production, even if you can use other tools or other Excel calculation, if you like. So the question is just to do something ahead uh, of production. So it's just to calculate. The goal is to calculate ahead of, of the production and just after, because when you calculate ahead of it, uh, you take the, the good decision. And just to give you a, a, an example, we used the tool in September on three different kind of production. One in London, uh, that, that was about one ton. Uh, uh, of uh, carbon emission. One, one movie we did for a client in New York at 37 tons. And this one I was talking about at the beginning of the, of the presentation uh, that was over 100 tons. Honestly, if you would have, uh, we did that after the production, unfortunately. I, I know that if we had done that six months before, before the production, I'm pretty sure we'd have changed a couple of things just, just because you, you, you cannot. Um, manage what you cannot measure, and so it's good to measure in order to manage. The media calculator, I, I, I don't want to be long about it, just to tell you that at this moment, Group M, which is part of WPP, uh, is, is ready to open his media calculator to the whole market, which is really uh, good and generous and, and playing really collective, which is uh, great, so thanks, thanks for that. And at this moment, there are discussions with all the media agencies who have their own tools, to see how this fits uh, with their strategy and how uh, we could have one tool for all uh, in terms of media in order to focus and concentrate on the quality of one tool and not in the same time on the quality of uh, 10 tools together. A word about um, the responsibility, the common responsibility we have to push uh, products that are better for the future and not to push too much if not uh, stopping totally uh, advertising products that are not that good. Uh, and there is an interesting initiative uh, that has been taken again in UK called Change the Brief Alliance, which is a non-for-profit partnership between uh, agencies uh, with a lot of learning programs. And the idea is that every, every, every time an agency is get a team from an agency is getting a brief, is to challenge the brief based on the environmental sustainability uh, issue. So it doesn't mean we are not going to answer to the brief. It means that how can we answer to the brief, the exact brief, whatever it is, taking into account at its best the environmental sustainability. Uh, so the question is not to be part of the association. It's 300 euros you can be part of the association. The question is, is to have this mindset. Every time you communicate, how can you move forward in the right way? 
And uh, last, uh, to, to, uh, as a conclusion uh, for, for this uh, uh, speech, introductory speech, uh, learning programs are really now available. Would it be through AdNet Zero? Would it be through the EACA? Uh, so I'm, I'm a member of the EACA, so I'm doing a little bit of advertising for the EACA, the European Advertising Communication Association, uh, who has developed uh, with um, the, the, the WFA uh, this chart about greenwashing with the principles, so I'm not going to enter into detail, but this exists. The question is, who has read that? In that room, nobody, apart from me, because I'm, uh, I was presenting it. And the question is, everyone should read that. So the question is, how can we ensure that every people in our team, would it be uh, on the advertiser side, in communication team and marketing team, would it be on the agency side, knows that? Because it's just common sense, you know? But uh, uh, why reinvent the wheel when it has been already uh, done pretty well. So this will be, uh, I'm French, so I'm a little bit Frenchy, uh, but uh, uh, I, I care for the parity, as you can see. Uh, so uh, let's play it collective, and uh, this will be my uh, uh, answer for today's speech. So hello and welcome also from my side. My name is Natasha Sommer, or as much as elegantly put it, charming Natasha. <laughs> I'll just leave it as it is. We'll talk about that later on. Um, I'd like to warm <laughs> welcome to the second part of our evening with regards to the panel discussion. Um, on stage with me here today, we have Tobias. Tobias, who is the founder of co-founder, sorry, of Web Republic. We do it collectively, I heard you. Laura Loos, Coca-Cola Company, Switzerland, responsible for the marketing. Nicolas, I don't have to the introduce. Same one, yeah. It's the same guy as we just saw. <laughs> My brother. Now. And of course, Roman, who has the very special task of putting sustainability in a bank. We'll get to that later on. First, I would like to thank Nicolas for this very, very informative introduction to the topic. I learned a lot, uh, especially about how do we get our house in order and that there's something wrong with our house. The next slide shows. I hope it's working. Thank you. Oh, you want it, me to? Ah, thank you very much. I can do it for you. Merci beaucoup. Charming French too. So, sustainable marketing. We're under pressure. The house is not in order. This October, Evian was put on trial for greenwashing. Greenwashing litigation is increasing quite significantly. We see a lot of companies being put before trial for claims that they cannot prove. If you compare the last the three years before 2020, we had 27 litigation PRs on greenwashing. In the last two years, we had more than 60. So there is a significant increase in this litigation PR. And that's where the nice claim from Chantal came in, who organized the event for us. She had this wonderful headline, and I really love it. It's the good, the bad, and the greenwash. So the good, the bad, and the greenwash, how do we get our house in order? I would like to start by asking the panel a question about sustainable marketing. How do we see this? How do we live this on a daily basis? Laura, I would like to start with you. How do you live sustainable marketing on a daily basis? Yeah, so if I think about that term, to me, there are basically three key points that come to mind. So it's about transparency, it's about credibility, and it's about trust. Ultimately, the trust that we have to gain from our consumers, from our stakeholders, from the industry, from NGOs, you need to start with transparency. You need to be very clear in what the actions you do, the actions that we take in our business in order to contribute positively to the change that we all want to see on the environment and as part of a better shared future. So you mentioned the people, you mentioned the planet. It has to be transparent what we do in order to improve that situation. But then also it needs to be credible. So um, Natasha, you mentioned the proof point. Yes, we need to take our actions but it also needs to be transparent in the way how we can prove them. So it needs to be 
a situation where we can have um, a dialogue, where we can have a collaboration with an external third party agency with uh, compliance um, regulations, with external experts who can really prove that, yes, we are walking the talk. This is the importance of it. And only in this way we can ultimately gain the trust that is needed from our consumers to decide which product to buy or also for us as employees to decide do we feel comfortable working for that company. As you mentioned, Nicola, 45% are questioning that. So it's really not just us as a consumer, but us as a whole individual. So transparency, credibility and trust for me are the key essence when I think of sustainable marketing. Transparency, credibility and trust. Roman, can I hand over to you? I mean, you have the, <coughs> one of the most challenging jobs in the industry at the moment. As you all know, Roman is doing marketing for Credit Suisse, uh, which is going through a big transformation and there's quite some turmoil. You came from Micro before. How did you experience marketing in your new company and how do you live this on a daily basis? Yeah, so first of all, I don't understand why you're laughing. <laughs> um, no, I do. So, um, I mean, it's perhaps going back to the, uh, the question I had when I was invited if I want to be part of the panel, uh, because in the, in, the, in the invitation discussions, there were three different terms and they all mean something different in credit space. So one was the topic is sustainability and marketing or sustainability marketing or sustainable marketing, three different aspects. And on, on these levels, we are differently, and like on different levels, good or not good as credit space. So um, I think the role that we have to play in our firm is perhaps different from the role I had at Micro. And Micro, you perhaps some know, Micro is like most sustainable retailer every second or third year in the world. So the basic question was, what of the good things Micro is doing do we want to promote? So that was basically the question. Uh, here, the, the question is a different one. Here the question is to actually, and, and I wasn't going into that job saying, oh my God, I'm so happy to promote sustainability of a bank. I was going in there and saying, so look guys, now I'm responsible to be that filter between what you think is cool and what real people out there think about you. So um, the question is sustainability and marketing. So what is the substance? Before we start talking about the storytelling you want from me, what is the substance? Should we actually talk about that? Sometimes the best marketing advice is we're not talking about that area. You get your stuff in order, and when it's in order, we can think about marketing about it. So that's the first thing. So basically having a, a right of refusal and giving honest feedback from clients and, and research. But secondly, also um, finding a platform that, that humbles the whole company. So when we are talking about um, sustainability, for instance, we have that one tagline that in English says, we are on it, um, wir sind dran in German. So it implies um, we are not proud of the result yet, but we're working on it. So we know we have a gap to fill. So that's the second thing that we did as marketing. So we helped them have a language that whatever they put in on a, as a headline they want to see, it's humbled by the tagline below. Right? So can we clean the ocean? Yeah, let's say we're on it. Right? So, And the last part is that people don't see or can see if they go on our website that we structured the kind of thoughts they have and that helps with the bank protect, disrupt, or transition are the three areas that we gave them as a wording that the marketing helped the sustainability unit. Because sometimes people attack us on, you're not helping protect what is there, like the rainforest or whatever. And then they say, you should invest in NGOs and startups. That is disruption, helping like three people, companies grow. But the biggest chunk that we have is transition. So the math that the bank has is, like, I mean, the ones who are really genuinely about sustainability, the math is, if I help five startups who have a great sustainability idea, that'll help the, the world with 200 tons of, of carbon. But if we help Shell transition from oil to solar as a company, and that's where we give them the hundreds of millions of investments, that saves 1,000 tons of carbon. It's not sexy to say that, but that is where we have the biggest leverage as a company. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the three elements, like stopping, giving them a language, and at the same time, helping them talking about, you know, if you're talking about oil and gas, you're transitioning someone. That is the leverage. That is totally different from protecting the rainforest. It's a different area we have to tackle. I think helping is uh, one good word for you to be us. 
So how can you help companies in their sustainable marketing? Um, in many different levels, I think also like the answers from Roman and from you, Laura, they have been very like structured, right? And I think my perspective to the topic is, um, I think, much more emotional. So uh, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm also standing here to, as, a, as a person from the industry. I'm standing here as a father. I'm standing here as, a, as an entrepreneur. And I think to think about how I can help companies also to, to think about who do I want to be in 10 years? And would it would I like what I did in the next ten years when uh, when when looking back and um, what I did uh, at being beginning of the year was that I realized that there's at least one person in every agency that cares about these topics but they're not really connected and they think like they're not able to like find um, um, a majority to like group around them and to get action and on on this movement and out of this idea and the real, realization that really there is this one person in every agency um, came the idea to connect these people um, to talk to each other and actually like build an alliance that uh, that, that really connects these uh, uh, sources together and now some months later um, I think we have more than 11 partners here in Switzerland sounds not like a lot of partners but are those are the biggest uh, agencies in Switzerland so some of the biggest uh, contributions in this uh, in this industry and we're all working towards the same goal we're now seeing at net zero also being promoted globally um, we're one small part here in Switzerland and and I think what we can help is really to like facilitate these changes these discussions and really try to make this change on on a very small scale within the agency and I really liked uh, how like put that into perspective um, we are on action three <laughs> so the media side um and i think it really makes a big difference um to just start moving so that's uh where i'm coming from thank you to me as would you have a similar experience nicholas yes i won't be long because a lot of things have, have been uh, i just would like to add something which is in my point of view when you are talking about green marketing it's 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 it looks like painting, you know, green painting. So, uh, so the question, as as you did mention, uh, is really about sustainability is a transformation. So it's not just protecting, by the way, and you are fully right, say protecting is part of it, but it, it cannot. We cannot solve things just by protecting it. So if we see uh, what we are the, the task as transformation, the question is to embark everyone uh, with the same. Uh, point of view on the transformation, which is not really easy because you have uh, the new guys, uh, the old guys, uh, the people who care, the people who cares for other uh, topics and so on. But to create this movement, you need communication. So my point is just about uh, the role of communication and the reason why we should attract even much more talents. Uh, would it be in marketing? Would it be in communication departments? Um, uh, within advertisers? Would it be in our agencies? Is that to transform, we need to get the people in and getting the people in is communicating the, in the right way. So we should be proud of communicating. Uh, of course, people say, oh, but you, in the past you communicate for bad things. Surely, but uh, it's not a reason not to communicate on good things today. So just join and come and communicate on good things today. So as uh, Roman said, we're at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're exactly. at it. So as one of the largest brands worldwide, we just heard you know, transformation is needed. We need people to rethink. How can large brands like Coca-Cola, you know, one of the largest brands in the world, can meet the needs of everyone without compromising on the customers, without compromising on, you know, what the brand stands for? How do you see that, Laura? Yeah. So for me, I mean, obviously, there's our big flagship brand Coca-Cola, there's also in Switzerland uh, a big portfolio of smaller other brands of also very local brands like Falsa Water that you see here. So it's really about the different layers of how to communicate, what to communicate, what audience to address. So when we think, for example, about all the different shapes and forms, I mean, we can go into the depth of our operating actions, of our targets that we set ourselves from the credibility aspect, what do we want to reach? We all need to hold ourselves accountable on it, not just at the very high level with the goals, the ultimate goals being net zero at a certain uh, 2023, uh, so, sorry, 2030 or 2040, um, but it's also about breaking it down to each and every function, to each and every individual employee involved to it, 
how, what does it mean in terms of, for example, the marketing campaigns on a particular product innovation? Is that relevant for the end consumer? Then we can discuss that and we can incorporate that in our brand campaign. If it is about our corporate actions that we take, for example, on the production sites, Brutizellen or Falz, then it's about really being very transparent in our sustainability report, seeking always the proof point of independent third party um, credibility uh, measures so that we have, for example, the targets to follow the Paris Agreement, so that we have the targets of, for example, our water brand, water as a key resource in our products, the Alliance for Water Stewardship. So these are all elements that you need to incorporate to um, communicate transparently, but then also to make sure you hold yourself accountable, but also to, to obviously communicate towards the right audience. So Falsa, for example, you see here a bottle um, that we brought with us. It doesn't have a label. It's one of our bottles in the portfolio where we just launched a version of the Falsa product um, without the label in order to really drive again another nuance on sustainability in terms of reducing waste, reducing, making less is more in that case, and also trying to be even more recyclable. So even better in not uh, at the very end through the chain, separating the label from the bottle. So it's small steps, and this could be relevant in order to explain the consumer. What is it about? The rest, for example, really more in-depth going on the production sites. That's part of how we can communicate in our overall agenda, how to reach net zero, for example. So many elements that come together and it's all about which audience do we address. So less is more, understood that. It goes very much into the discussion we're at it. Roman, for a company that doesn't have a production site, it's quite difficult mm -hmm. to reduce scope one and two mm -hmm. uh, because you're, mm -hmm. well, Maybe you are a different opinion, but for us, with the ISO certification of production site, there was already an intention of, you know, being efficient as efficient as possible. How did you experience that with the new brand, well, Credit Suisse, uh, on communicating something that is not rooted in your DNA as a company? Yeah, I differentiate the answer. I'd say. We were very good at it, and we are all we are all like carbon neutral on this, but no one cares about that part of our company. That is the point, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this for us, scope three is the only thing people talk about. Like mm -hmm. what do our clients do? Yeah. So we're basically responsible for what our clients do. That is that is what we are attacked for, not what we do. Right. So the like our buildings and, and the, the scope one and two of Credit Suisse is close to and in some parts in some areas and some sites carbon neutral for years. But that is no journalist is interested in that. So um, that is the one part. The second part is that um, the company had to decide between the differences between our own interests in that regard and the interests of our clients. And you'd be surprised when we have this uh, discussion in public, people talk about like the big corporates, like, are oh, you in oil and gas? But usually the problem is not that. The problem is the 1.8 million clients we have who are millionaires and billionaires and say, make more out of my money. And we say, yeah, here are those sustainable funds. And they say, what is the return on invest? Oh, no, let's go for something that has more return. So that is the, that is the biggest leverage. They have the money. We invest for them. And they, but they tell us, I want it sustainable or not. So that is the unknown part of, part of marketing is when we help the areas tell the client why they should go in there and perhaps have 5 and not 7% return on invest. So that is the, the, the big leverage that we have. We are calculating that there is a, I think is a 950, 960 billion gap that is needed to invest more in sustainability in the world. So that is out there that people invest in something where they think they get some return on. And if they would just shift that into sustainable industries or industries that help disrupt and transition, they would get a little bit less return, but for a, a longer period of time, because then the world has no, not a problem. So that is the part that we are working on. And we have, 20, all, we have 2050 net zero goals. We have 2030 goals. Um, marketing itself is part of the WFA Planet Pledge. So we're trying our little pieces, you say, and you say the nuances. So for instance, our um, 
campaign around sustainability, so sustainability marketing, um, we did total, like carbon neutral in sense of uh, we offset the rest of the media planning, but the production, like if you've seen the commercials last year with these turtles caught in a net and so on, none of that was filmed. <clears throat> so there was all pre-filmed from all stock material around the world. So the creative agency did nothing but looking for snippets that have been produced already, cutting it together to a new commercial. So we had basically no production carbon uh, um, emissions. But still, when we calculated that for tonight, I asked the teams like, so, but still the media planning, what was the media planning? Because it was on Bloomberg, CNBC, Swiss television, and it was still uh, 48 tons of carbon just for the media planning mm -hmm. of that. I think that's an interesting aspect. So we're starting to recycle advertising material. Think of it. There is a lot of opportunity in recycling the material as such. I see people running around making pictures of the same bottles over and over again. And maybe we should rethink on how we do that. And there was an interesting topic in your speeches now on the perception. So we think we're actually doing something right, whereas in fact we don't. That's because we have a lack of understanding of what this is all about. And this is, I think, a question for you, Tobias. So we think ah, we're living in a digital world. And as we just saw from the numbers from Nicholas, uh, they might be a little bit different than we think. Um, is there anything uh, you can say with regards to the channels which you say, okay, if you want to be more sustainable, focus more on this or that channel? And I'd like to hear you on that as well, Nicholas. Please go ahead first. Um, well, first of all, I, think, I do think, yes, we are living in a uh, pretty much digital first world. And maybe to add to your uh, statement before, Roman, I think also in terms of recycling, AI will open up a completely new world of like not being like um, forced to shoot uh, in all um, corners of the world um, every day. <clears throat> but putting that aside, maybe talking about channels, because I don't know how many of you in the room are familiar with Green Media. Green Media is, uh, as I mentioned before, a Selbsthilfegruppe, a <laughs> self-help uh, group of, uh, of local agencies. Uh, we started with, with five. Um, members were now 10, Web Republic Media Plus Service Plan. Um, they brought in the calculator to the group. Group M is part of it. Denzu, Wirtz, uh, KSB, a pioneer in, in, in this area, uh, Heller Meyer, Debt and Publicis and Life Systems. So we have a quite interesting group of, uh, of companies from the local um, industry. No clients because clients are, um, <laughs> as you mentioned, also. Um, we're building this for them so they can easily do this. And the things we're doing with green media is we are um, offsetting and, and going green like um, all the companies are doing that. And then we're helping clients to calculate the campaign emissions and offsetting it or reducing it. So reducing first, offsetting second. And now the question is, um, and it's an interesting question, I think also in your talk, um, what are the, like which channel is, is bad <laughs> is digital bad is uh, uh is, is print bad etc um and the the thing is there's no easy answer to that because there are so many different nuances and it's it, it sounds like an easy scientific um thing but at the end i mean media planning is you constantly change things there are tons of different formats uh, and the thing is do you count um, a three second video view on facebook in the same way as you count an addressable TV session that lasted for 30 seconds. So it's really difficult to like um, do that. However, we tried on our end um, working with the green GRP calculator from uh, Climate Partner, which is uh, the partner that we use in this endeavor. Um, we tried to like make a simple calculation, same budget, same reach um, for the different channels. And the interesting answer there is really that um, if you take that, and through all the different channels, 85% um, of the emissions will account will be accounted to print. Um, why? So it's for supplements, for instance, or newspaper ads, because um, there's a lot of energy being used for a single advertising contact. So you get your own booklet and you're the only one um, uh, watching it, um, maybe. Um, so that accounts to 85. And then, of course, second is also um, streaming, video ads. Uh, addressable TV, streaming, um, all these uh, things. Then a gap, TV, 1%, then it gets lower, 0 0.5 digital out of home because a lot of people are seeing the same ad. Um, 
then radio, online audio, posters, and then uh, at the lowest end, 0 0.1 is uh, for cinema ads because a lot of people are seeing the same ad at the same time. Um, but again, I mean, if half of the people don't show up in the cinema, how do you calculate that, right? So it's really about um, understanding, but the main thing is really like the more people are interacting with your video or with your uh, creative, the less emissions there are. And if you are like sending out big booklets uh, for color print uh, to singular people, yes, that that will have an impact. That will have an impact. Niklas, would you underline that? Yes, I fully um, uh, support your analysis. And uh, I would like to add something about the granularity of the data, because it's the same. We are facing the same issue would be uh, to measure production. Uh, OK, but uh, we were two in the room, so how, how do we count uh, the room, you know? So uh, you have so many parameters uh, that you can take into account that you can be lost in the analysis. Would it be for the production measurement uh, carbon footprint or would it be for the, for the media? And we should try to avoid that. We should try to avoid that by keeping some, uh, staying at a certain level of granularity where we can understand what we do, when we can see where are the low-hanging fruits we can really address. And we know that programmatic, for instance, uh, is a disaster uh, because uh, it's going to the servers uh, at high speed and so on. So we should really, as a community, as a collective, take your analysis, cross it with other countries' analysis, and, and try to act where it is uh, really uh, the most uh, efficient short term. And then we can fight about uh, the, the granularity later on, but at least we should agree on what is um, uh, the, the, most, um, the most important. So I think it's true for media and it's true uh, also for, for production. So yes, you, we have to accept the fact that we don't know and we never know. There's no truth. There's just, uh, like in marketing, huh, there's good analysis that we can have and we have enough data in order to take the right decision. So it's, I think it's the same uh, for, for carbon fighting. So on your side, Oman, are you already using these kind of tools at zero advertising or uh, at net zero advertising, as is it called? Yeah, some of them. So we are, we are experimenting a little bit. But as I mean, as you just said, the analyzed but paralyzed, um, you have all this data. So what do you do with it? Right. So I think what we have to understand is it's about intention and genuinely believing in the journey. Like, I mean, I like, yeah. I like your comparison. So do what I can I look in the mirror in 10 years time. Um, and then you do the right decisions when you start saying, yeah, someone analyzed, this is 1% more sustainable than this. Then you're coming into like a, a race or competition and, and like you're doing dashboards on it. But if you just have the right intention and everyone on your team has the same goal on mind, we want to go down in our carbon footprint, here are some indications, then the overall footprint will go down rather than saying, no, there is a super high person, this is this uh, single point of contact, this person can calculate all the data, and then you just slow down, it's not fun, it's complicated to do it, and people will just find their way around it and not do it. Because we have to be honest, right? So, so the whole discussion, we're talking as marketers here, right? So. We are talking about getting less wet while we swim. Um, <laughs> everything we do is not good for the environment because we're pushing consumption. That is the basic problem, right? So the best, the best. Uh, so to go back to the intro question of you, it's not about making the the banana less bad. And so this micro is doing a lot on having this more sustainable banana, but then investing a million in the commercials and eight million in the media planning to make you buy more of these bananas. Right, so and we are all oh, that's super sustainable. No, it would honestly, it would be sustainable to say buy a banana less, right? Consume less. That would help the planet. So we are all talking about how do I minimize the negative impact we have. So that is why I say it's about intention, understanding what we're doing, not like putting up a halo and saying, oh, we are super sustainable. We are rescuing the world. We're not. We're helping to less damage a world that has a consumption bias. So we always, we all, I think, have dashboards that tell us if we're below year on year, we have a problem. So we all are paid to make people buy more, do more. I would, I would really be interested to listen into your discussion with the sales department. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, when you have the sales department, they go, okay, we need to increase our sales. We need to get a large pie, share of the pie. Yeah. How would you argument? How, what would you say? Because, if you go in there and you say, okay, 
Transformation will now do green marketing and will sell less. No, so that's what, that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That is, yeah. that is in principle not possible, at, at least not where if you're a, like a, a public company. You have shareholders who say, yeah, I don't agree. Mm -hmm. um, but what you can do is like reduce the damage while growing. That is, that is our task, I think, if we want to be really honest, right? So yeah. the world is not better if everyone drives a Tesla. We have other problems in, in the mines in, in Africa with that. So there's always a downside to it. And as, uh, if we acknowledge that, then we don't like split the world into the good companies and the bad companies like every company that wants to have sales growing have to have a plan on how to reduce the footprint of sales and for instance in our case to the sales department that we don't have in that case but um for the for the different businesses the question is with what do we want to grow over a long time mm -hmm. as you said it's not only with employees it's also with clients over a long term you lose clients if you don't offer them the sustainable version of the same sales. So the, in the short term, yes, you win. If you're looking for the next quarterly result, good. But in 11 quarters, you will ha not have that client anymore. So it's basically also sales. Yeah, I, I would uh, agree on 90%, but perhaps disagree on, on 10%, which is the following. I, I think we will agree that the question is, is about the what, the why we know. The how we have to be honest, but what are we talking? What are we selling, uh, in fact? And the issues about the what. But the good news is that a lot of companies have the choice to um, to to sell a good a good what and not a bad what, or a little bit more of a good what and a little bit less of, of a bad what. So I, I think uh, you can convince even salespeople based on your um, uh, on what you say. I fully agree about uh, the long term, and uh, we all have kids and so on. But also. But the possibility to switch a little bit less on the bad and a little bit more on the good. If you, I don't know, if you are a car company, you can decide to switch a little bit more on the electric part of it, if you believe electric is the solution, which is part, uh, partly true, um, uh, and, and a little bit less on the other one. So I think our responsibility is to, to try to push a little bit more on, on, on the good uh, products is that people can absolutely continue to buy. The idea is not to stop consumption. We still we, we need to eat, we need to drink, we need uh, uh, to to live in, uh, in somewhere. The question is, is to try to push in the right way the consumption. So so advertising is there and communication is there uh, to to create the desire for that kind uh, of good products and less desire, if not hate, for the bad products. Before we uh, go to the questions and answers, because I'm sure you have a lot of questions that are burning under your nails, as they say in German, uh, I would like to go into the second topic, more like the dialogue. I really like that it's Think Collective. And there is also this challenging part in the dialogue. So we talked about the SPTIs, that's one thing. But how are you in dialogue? And I'd like to uh, address this question to you, Laura, um, with regards to feedback, not only from your internal sales department, but also from the external NGOs that it's not going fast enough. No, dialogue is basically really the key of importance here. Um, there, are, there are a few elements to it. So in the end, you can only... As a big corporation, obviously, you have big challenges to tackle. It is a transition, as you said, Roman. We need to stimulate, as you said, um, Nicola, we need to stimulate also our consumers into new patterns, into new behaviors. We need to innovate on um, new future technology that drives basically the change. And we cannot do that alone. So collaboration is key, collective thinking but it's also about collaboration, as I mentioned in the beginning, to really to also to verify that so we are on the right track, for example. Are so you challenged from the outside world? Absolutely, from every <laughs> angle. <laughs> okay, okay. From first, I'm, I'm not referring to COP27 because that's, that's clear. <laughs> that's but one of the latest ones. Yeah. Collaboration <laughs> with NGOs on worldwide level, for example. Exactly. It's, it's from the NGOs, obviously. I mean, you've seen uh, the latest headlines uh, from, when was it yesterday or the day before? We have three plastic bottles here in front of us. So, yes, we know overall from the entire value chain or the CO2 footprint, this is actually a better footprint than, for example, a non-returnable glass bottle. Yeah, But it's really about how can we make sure that every aspect of that chain we can improve and we cannot do that alone. So we actually want to partner with 
the right NGOs, with the right alliances, with the consumer feedback, with stakeholders, with retailers. What is it that you want from us so we understand where we need to start to take action? For example, for the consumer, what are the preferences? How can we give them the right product or the right nuances? Or how can we, for example, innovate in uh, refillable businesses? How can we think of the scope three, for example, of our customers and retail partners? What is our contribution to that? So, for example, when we think of the plastic bottle used, this should not be virgin plastic. It should be already recycled granulate that we use. So in order to drive down that scope, and this could be one contribution. What about the water, the sugar, everything that we use in our products? How can each aspect of the supply chain, for example, and our contributors, how can this be in the most sustainable way produced and then also um, sold to the end consumer? And ultimately, it's about that, let's say, challenging friction, that exchange in order to drive us to new thinking, in order to understand what is coming up in the next few years, 5, 10, 20, 50 what is it that we need to keep on our radar in order to be prepared and in order to, to start, set the right direction now to serve up and innovate in exactly these angles? Mm -hmm. So we heard the NGOs, we heard the dialogue. I think the, you know, the, the society as such is larger than that. We also have a regulator. I would like to hear your view, especially on that, but I would like to ask the others to join in. With regards to regulation, what do we see upcoming on the horizon? Nicholas. So I'm a great believer that uh, to get people on board, desire is better than constraint. So in my point of view, the key issue we are facing collectively is to create the desire to move faster than any rules or any regulation uh, could, uh, could act. Um, so, so this is a kind of principle uh, I would have personally, I and propose to, to share with you, which is that we would be that active that no regulator could follow us uh, at the right pace. Nevertheless, I fully understand that sometimes self, well, I, I'm a great believer of self-regulation, of course, playing collective is really to uh, elaborate, to, to avoid uh, competitive disadvantage and to be sure mm -hmm. that um, people are at the right, right pace on the same obvious, I would say, um, uh, movements or transformations. And when needed, uh, if a law is needed, of course, I'm not against uh, the law. But the, my point is normally um, at the global, we are facing a global issue. Regulations are local regulations. So, uh, of course, uh, sometimes uh, Europe is able to do great things with uh, GDPR, but we've seen that there was a lot of side effects of GDPR. So there was a, an amazing good intention with GDPR, but we have penalized a lot of European companies because of GDPR. So uh, regulation is not the goal, is not uh, the, the, the gold mine. So my point is we should collectively uh, move faster enough that no global regulation that doesn't exist and no local regulation can follow. Good. You said something about the role of the uh, association in Europe. Uh, I'd like to ask a question here to our panels uh, with regards to the local association. What, think, what do you think their role is going to be in future? Because, you know, we're doing trainings on better marketing. Should sustainable marketing be part of that? Is it already part of that? How do you see the future role of an association like the International Advertising Association or the Swiss Advertisers Association. I mean, <clears throat> I can speak also as a as, as a um, board member of the um, leading Swiss agency association. <laughs> and I think um, it really helps to see that other people are doing things right. So enabling the the ones behind us and and around us. I think that's uh, that that's a key thing that we need to do, and also facilitating this change because. It takes a lot of time, right, to come up with these slides. It takes a lot of time to like do the first step and really make the first step as easy as possible. I think that's a very classic um, task for for an association, right? Um, why is Green Media not a, um, a part of the um, LSO? Because LSO has a lot of different other uh, topics. Um, but I think, and and for me, the steering, um, like. The guiding principle for me is like this campaign that I saw by um, um, WWF. Um, we don't we don't need perfectionists. 
but many people who fly less. So not just 10 people stop flying, but if everybody flies a bit less, that's way better. And also uh, points towards your, your direction, like um, scope of change and, and, and not just like one little startup that uh, does something. Um, and then if we enable a lot of companies around us, small companies, big companies to actually make that step, calculate the emissions, talk about it, learn about at net zero, learn about all the great things that are around us, um, it makes it less less weird to actually do the same thing. And I think that already uh, makes a big, big difference. So even more collective, this is one big part of it, because now the Q&A session is opened, meaning you're part of the collective and we would like to hear your questions to the panelists. Uh, I think there is a microphone. Yes, Chantal has a microphone in place, so please ask your question. I also like to ask the uh, online participants, put the questions in the chat and we will make sure that we get them on stage somehow. So any first questions from the audience here in Zurich? Not everybody at the same time. Yes, there is a question. Thank you. I was constantly thinking about um, Patagonia while you guys were talking about you know sustainability and such. And um, what I learned about this company is that it is deeply ingrained in their values, basically, that sustainability is a major, major part of you know, what they're doing. And when it comes to the value um, grid, so to speak, of each and every company, I just wonder you know, how you know, major stakeholders, such as the board of directors, um, and in Switzerland, it's obviously very special because of the board of directors has a very important visionary and strategic function, is um, sharing you know, your thoughts across the board, so to speak, uh, when it comes to values. Because if a company has strong values, um, I you know, tend to believe that obviously it goes into the right direction for a positive future. If not, then it's marketing talk, as Roman said, and, and I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely on your side, Roman. It is, it is something that is marketing on the one hand, but you know, how do you think about this point around values, strong values when it comes to sustainability? Thanks. I'd like to thank you for the question, but I didn't hear your name in the beginning, so it's, it's Manfred from uh, yeah, it's Manfred Strobel. Okay, Manfred. Hi, Manfred. Oh, I think this question was almost directly posed to Roman. You want to add something no. about the values? <laughs> yes, he was like... So first, I, I don't know if I'm the party pooper today, but I, I'd also say Patagonia, <laughs> that you know of, of her, their sustainability focus, that's also part of their marketing, right? So that's how they try to sell more. Just saying that on that point. And it's, and it's sometimes, and if I go, yeah, if, if you, it's also, right? I'm not saying they're not true to it, but um, list... 100 companies in the whole world of all the 5 million companies that are like Patagonia. Just, I'm thinking of stopping at number seven. Um, so that is a very easy example, uh, like to point this one, a very a narrow, uh, narrow industry they're in to other companies. But if you go into the, the companies that really make a difference, and I agree with you, um, are the ones that have the right values and try to change the industry they're in and not just go for the, the industry that they can be super sustainable in. So um, in our case, for instance, yes, we, I mean, we exchanged the whole board of directors and we exchanged the whole EXP. So our board of directors and EXP from four years ago and today is not a single person the same. So yeah, so we, we seem to have, I'm gonna have to be careful, I'm on record here, right? So we <laughs> seem to have had need, uh, need in change of values on the top, yeah. Yes, cool. it was quite some transformation with yeah. them. Would you see this similar in other companies, Nikos? Yes, we see, we see uh, especially in Europe, I would say, it's a little bit different in the States where they have also the priority of uh, diversity and inclusion. But uh, in Europe, we can see there is really a, a new consciousness uh, of the topic, obviously at the highest level. And I think it is coming, uh, at, as you mentioned at the start, because uh, they are mothers, those people are mothers and fathers, you know. And um, I, cannot, I, I cannot tell who, but one of the of the head of the largest worldwide company has changed his mind because of uh, his daughter going to South Africa, working uh, 
uh, in, an, in an NGO, uh, and suddenly it was not the same <laughs> uh, talking about uh, um, about environment, uh, the sustainability within the company. So I, I think that the new generation uh, of, uh, because I'm getting a little bit old, uh, of my kids um, uh, are really the one who can, who have to change uh, and can change. And uh, personally, I'm pushing a lot the, what I call the positive internal activists. Uh, every company has kind of positive internal activities. Not people who are against uh, their company, but they want their company to transform uh, faster. And these are really the game changers because uh, they, they, they get the, the hear from uh, the executive committee because they want to keep those people because if not, those people mm -hmm. are, are going, and especially after the COVID, <laughs> they are just quitting, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so I think that um, you have a, a initiative like Alumni for the Planet, which is a, a kind of transversal sharing. And I agree with you also that the more you share, the more you are inspired, for sure. So of course, it's not about applying exactly the same solution than the others, but sharing more uh, is, is, uh, is acting more. So, so, so my point of view is, yes, it's moving. It's moving thanks to the kids of those people, uh, women and men uh, who are at, at the board of the companies. So I think we should educate much more those people. We should teach in their schools in order for, for them to, to, to explain to their parents why they have to move in the right direction, as they did for digital, because most of those people bec became digitalized uh, thanks to their kids. So why not would they become much more environmental friendly thanks to their kids? I see another hand up at the end of our audience, right in the back, last row. Thank you, Chantal. We're going row by row, right? Yeah, yeah I yeah. think we're, we're <laughs> getting, the they're, they're coming closer. They're coming right. closer. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's Pascal speaking. Um, Hi, Pascal. I, I see a, a lot of companies that look into their own buildings, into their own products, in whatever they do, including my company. And then, um, as me being in marketing, I, I tend to start to look from the consumer. And if, if, I, um, if it is correct what behavioral economics say, then it is about 30% uh, and 30% and another 30%. So we have like a, a third of the people, they will be green anyway, and, the, and they will do anything for sustainability without us doing anything at all. And then you have uh, a third of the people, they will never ever change, <laughs> they will fly like hell, and it's just a waste of money and a waste of time. And then there is like a, a third of people, they are in between, and, and they would like to be inspired to change their routine. And now my question to the panel, I mean, from a media point of view, Tobias, I mean, how can we target these, uh, like, um, third of the people that are ready to change their routine? Is that a campaign brief? We <laughs> <laughs> can sit together afterwards. Um, I think it, it really takes a lot of different uh, um, elements to that, right? Um, really understanding who they are in that case. Um, but I really think that once you start communicating and making things visible. So for instance, in, 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 uh, in, in the case of Migro, I really like this little um, twist they had in the, in the, M, in the Cumulus uh, Abrechnung. Um, English words uh, for uh, specific Swiss things are always weird. Um, <laughs> where you saw how organic is your purchase in regards to the rest of the population. That's a way to use data in a non-offensive way uh, maybe really like help you to become a, a bit more green on that on, on that front um from a media channel perspective uh pascal i would say uh let's not use print supplements uh for that campaign um but really try to understand where are those people and really inspire them with uh with with, with like great examples and and really not not blaming people um i think that's that's mm -hmm. one way and the other way is also a lot of people try not to do things because they they fear that you need to be a perfectionist right and 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 as soon as you and that's also one thing that by the way we experienced and why we stopped talking too loud about this um once you start communicating about it it's greenwashing all the way already so either you do nothing then it's not good but if you do something and you like try to inspire other ones it's like are oh, you greenwashing this is only for your own advertising purposes um so I've, I think it really needs to come from an honest, um, from an honest place, and then step by step and uh, doing it constantly, and not just with one campaign. Maybe before Christmas, um, I think that really uh, makes a makes a difference in the long run. 
making the difference in the long run. I think that's a really good topic to almost end this panel with if there are no further questions. I see no hands, despite the fact that the light is on and I can see you all. Uh, we heard a very inspiring speech by Niklas. Think collective, do this as a team. It's going to be a challenge, Roman said, and I truly believe that it's going to be a challenge. It is a huge transformation in front of us. How can we do things better? We stay in the dialogue. We stay in the dialogue with people that are critical about us and that they measure us. And we go in the collective where we say we need more voices to see what it is we can do together. I really appreciated your inputs to this panel. I hope the audience liked it as much as I did. And with that, I would like to hand over back to Matthias again, I think, um, for the end of our session today. And I wish you a very nice aperitif afterwards, which I hope is climate neutral. Thank you. <laughs>
I just learned it today. So thanks a lot for being here and enjoy dinner and drinks. Thank you.